Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Oak. I'm an Enterprise Senior Fellow in Informed Cities at the University of Melbourne. The title of my lecture is Bridging the Gap Between Research and Policy for Climate Action, the Role of a City Network. With a background in science and experience in local government, I'm very interested in the interface between research, policy and practice for cities with a particular interest in how local government leaders are mainstreaming climate change action through integration of climate science into their policies and ultimately into practice. In this lecture, I will talk about bringing academia, the private sector and all levels of government together to advance climate action at the urban level. One thing to note before I move on, when I use the term city, this encompasses geographically discernible subnational areas of any size, such as neighbourhoods, central business districts, townships and metropolitan regions. I also use city to indicate local government and metropolitan authorities. The Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy, or GCOM, is the largest global alliance for city climate leadership, consisting of over 10,000 cities from six continents and 138 countries representing more than 800 million people, or about 21% of the global urban population. GCOM's mission is to serve cities and local governments by mobilising and supporting climate and energy action in their communities, by working with city and regional networks, national governments and other partners. The Alliance makes city-level data on local climate actions publicly available on one online platform and has also identified finance and research and innovation needs of cities, contributing to an evidence base for increased investment in low carbon, urban infrastructure, governance and policy. Cities are a key focus for climate action due to the dual challenge and potential that they represent. Urban populations are predicted to increase from 50% to two thirds of the global population, which will have a large impact on infrastructure, and basic service delivery regardless of the impact from climate change. The increase in global warming above 1.5 degrees Celsius significantly heightens the risk to urban ecological systems and human settlements, especially in the global south. Despite these challenges, there remains an opportunity for cities to adopt new approaches, technologies, infrastructures and other built forms that have low or net zero emissions, are energy efficient renewable and incorporate green infrastructure. And in doing so, contribute to national targets for emissions reductions and global commitments to the Paris Agreement. Globally, there remains a huge gap between the emissions reductions stated in nationally determined contributions and the reductions needed to keep the world within an increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming. GCOM's 2019 annual report Climate Emergency Unlocking the Urban Opportunity Together states that GCOM committed cities alone could reduce emissions by 2.3 gigatons of CO2 equivalent per year by 2030 compared to business as usual and 4.2 gigatons of CO2 equivalent per year by 2050 compared with the business as usual scenario filling 17% of the gap. The success of GCOM cities in meeting their urban development goals in conjunction with their emissions reduction goals and utilising available technology is reliant on collaboration with neighbouring communities, regional and national governments and other urban stakeholders on innovative policy, regulation and infrastructure. Filling knowledge gaps that cities have identified is also key. So how do we accelerate this transition? To harness the potential and responsibility of cities, we must focus on accelerating the transition through better informed, evidence-based city decisions. And key to this is a two-way sharing of knowledge between city scientists and city leaders to fill the knowledge gaps. Understanding what city leaders believe is important to progressing their stated climate action ambitions is critical to understanding which city scale climate data science or knowledge is needed from the research community. Often research already exists to fill city knowledge gaps, 
So it could be that innovation in technology, governance or policy is what will make all the difference. If it is a specific piece of data or research needed to progress climate ambitions, then an understanding of local context from a city leader can make all the difference. To help bridge the gap between climate science and city leaders, we need to see more examples from the research and innovation community of publications with or for cities, such as the 1.5 summary for urban policy makers. Here, IPCC scientists synthesised the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 degrees for urban policymakers, identifying actionable information for cities. The Four Cities by Cities publication, subsequently produced by leading city networks and representatives from their cities, took this synthesis even further into practical actions that cities can take based on the latest science. We need more of this knowledge, tra knowledge translation. Because as Climate Emergency Urban Opportunity, a report from the Coalition for Urban Transitions found, it is technically feasible to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from urban areas globally by 90% by 2050. This research found that overall, urban sectors can contribute 62% of global energy related greenhouse gas reductions needed for a two degrees Celsius pathway in 2030 and 58% of greenhouse gas reductions needed for a two degrees Celsius pathway in 2050. This chart shows that decarbonizing electricity and more efficient city buildings, transport materials and waste sectors is what is needed to transition our cities and for the most part, they identified that it's technically feasible to do this. Understanding the gaps between what is technically feasible and the barriers cities face to unlock this urban potential is critical to mobilising and supporting climate energy action. A special advisor on research and innovation to the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy. I've been contributing to an initiative called Innovate for Cities. Innovate for Cities was launched at the end of 2018, seven months after the Cities and Climate Change Science Conference in Edmonton, Canada. This first of a kind meeting with leading climate scientists, urban researchers and cities themselves identified gaps in city-focused climate science. It also identified a disconnection between urban academia and urban practitioners' work and identified the need for different approaches to addressing the gaps identified to accelerate the transition. One of the key outputs of the conference is the Global Research and Action Agenda on Cities and Climate Change Science, showcasing not only the important role that cities play in terms of climate impact and opportunities to address it, but also the breadth of knowledge needed to support decision makers and urban practitioners to tackle these challenges. The Innovate for Cities City Research Agenda is the result of an extensive review process that began with the climate change science priorities highlighted at the Cities and Climate Change Science Conference in Edmonton. Workshops with city officials, business leaders and academics took the identified climate change knowledge gaps from the Cities and Climate Change Science Conference in Edmonton and sought to understand these even further from a city perspective. The City Research Agenda identified gaps in knowledge in key development areas such as urban planning and design, buildings, energy and transportation, waste, water and food. It identified gaps in climate science and data at city scale, including for informal settlements. Local context and complexity needs to be built into knowledge and case studies being generated or innovative actions to enable other cities to follow suit more easily. City decisions take on multiple perspectives. So case studies were sought on multidisciplinary approaches like new data or engagement techniques that capture, include and involve diverse urban stakeholders in technology or infrastructure initiatives that help to reduce risks for vulnerable populations. The city research agenda also identifies a need to understand better or develop new governance, policy decision and finance, in, finance instruments to support capacity building 
the generation of city revenue or strategies for prioritising sustainability projects. To determine the initial priorities for action from this city research agenda, I've been developing a multi-year research and innovation strategy with GCOM, starting with a gap analysis undertaken in 2019 by the GCOM Research and Innovation Technical Working Group. This involved GCOM member organisations collating their current research projects and the Research and Innovation Technical Working Group aligning this current and planned research areas with the themes identified at the City's Climate Science Conference and the priorities of the Innovate for Cities City Research Agenda. A qualitative coding exercise of the collated projects to identify knowledge gaps this, uh, and, and also a, a clustering exercise um, of the resulting gaps to prioritise areas um, enabled us to focus in 2020. I present now the top six priority areas that the GCOM Technical Working Group is focusing their collaborative efforts on research and innovation in 2020. Generation of city scale data for development of specific observation models and scenarios. Governance landscapes, considering formal and informal actors to support greater generation of greater municipal revenue. Determine how to incorporate informal settlements into urban planning strategies. Decreasing the gap in climate relevant data on vulnerable communities. Assess and quantify the potential for green infrastructure to not only mitigate urban heat island and contribute to other adaptation measures, but also opportunities to improve air quality in urban areas. Explore how increased digitization, cloud computing uh, can advance climate action, especially links between private and public innovations and infrastructure. The focus in 2020 is to generate collaborative projects between GCOM members and partners in research and innovation on these global themes. There is also work underway to further define these research and innovation priorities specific to city regions. At the time of recording this video in June 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic is moving most of this work virtual. However, this work is seen as an opportunity to assist city leaders in their response to this global crisis. With economic activity significantly disrupted around the world as a result of government measures to address COVID, it is imperative that climate change mitigation adaptation and social equity is considered in the form of a green recovery. And that more than ever, city networks continue to coordinate their efforts, mindful of the strain their city members face. And so while COVID-19 raises many questions for decision makers and citizens, including how to prioritise needs, fund responses and allocate costs, which will inevitably reshape and refocus climate change and mitigation efforts, a focus on understanding their specific knowledge needs to implement climate action ambitions within these new circumstances is even more important than ever. I would like to acknowledge colleagues at the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy and the Connected Cities Lab at the University of Melbourne, also members of the Research and Innovation Technical Working Group, for preparing the work that went into the Innovate for Cities City Research Agenda and knowledge gaps for cities that underpin this global urban lecture. Thank you.